corporations. Introduction. The grandest society of merchants in the universe. Self-applied description of the East India Company, 1600 to 1708. During the centuries in which humanity was confined to a single planet, corporations were naturally limited in size and influence, like fish in a bowl. With access to a finite quantity of natural resources and a relatively small arena in which to compete, corporations could not achieve their full theoretical potential. But with the advent of interstellar travel, the fishbowl became an ocean. Corporations could access and exploit entire planets for their mineral resources and an expanding population eagerly colonizing system after system meant a growing customer base. To the governments of the time, the potential for corporate growth was both thrilling and terrifying. Commercial prosperity meant increased tax revenue and higher employment figures, but also raised the worrying prospect of security fleets that could rival the official militaries. It seemed inevitable that the largest corporations would, in time, become the equivalent of nation states in their own right. With the old restrictions gone, there was simply nothing to stop them. Today, this vision has been partly fulfilled with several corporations owning entire systems. For many corporate employees, the age-old distinction between a home and a workplace has vanished. Workers on corporate-owned ships, refineries, and outposts can expect to spend their entire lives in the embrace of the company. Despite their immense wealth and power, the corporations have thus far been content to operate within and remain subject to the jurisdictions of the Alliance, Empire, and Federation, rather than mount a serious challenge to any of them. Commentators point to two reasons for this. Firstly, corporations thrive by excelling in their chosen fields, and assuming the onerous responsibilities of a government would be a wasteful distraction from the corporate mission. Secondly, given that the corporations already hold much of the real power, especially in the Federation, there is nothing to be gained by abolishing the convenient veneer of the state. Better to operate below the surface, make a show of compliance, and trust in the power of money to smooth the way forward.